four or five in the morning and we just woke up to sirens and, and bombs. So it was very scary. Um, at the moment, my lady was pregnant with my son. Growing up in a situation like that, it's always, you got two options, pretty much. Well, you think you have two options. I know you, uh, you were born in uh, Illinois, but you grew up in Georgia. How was it for a kid, you know, growing up in Georgia? For me, a kid growing up in Georgia, it was, uh, you know, it was rough at times, but you know, it, I feel like uh, I have the same story as a bunch of, you know, low poverty kids coming up in America, um, trying to figure it out uh, day by day. Uh, basketball was my escape route. Uh, found time after school just to go to the, you know, go to the gym or outside court just to work on my game, uh, doing a bunch of, late shot clock situations by myself, trying to picture myself hitting game winners and things like that. So that's pretty much what it was, came down to in school. Was it, you know, your family trying to keep you out of the streets? That's why they, they pushed you uh, to playing foot, uh, to playing basketball, sorry. Uh, it wasn't my family trying to keep me out of the streets. It was pretty much just me trying to keep myself out of the streets. Um, Cause it's, you know, you've grown up in a situation like that, it's always, you got two options, pretty much. Well, you think you have two options, but you know, it's more than that. So I try not to think of it that way. And like I said, basketball was always my escape route and I ended up here. So, you know, it's just a blessing. Do you remember playing in open courts? Because you know, in America, it's, it's kind of a tradition. Uh, like outside courts? Yeah, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, especially uh, in Illinois. Uh, when I was growing up in Illinois, we would always walk to the, to the park and uh, you know, it was next to my elementary school too. So I would go out, try to uh, compete with the older guys, which was, you know, a little bit challenging at the time. But, you know, once I got to Georgia, it was more in, indoor than out, outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, most of Americans that play basketball, they start with another sport. I don't know, track and field, baseball, American football. Was it your case that way? Uh, yeah, so uh, I tried to get involved with football a little bit growing up. Mm -hmm. Which position? I couldn't even tell you. It was it was like uh, I tried to do like pee wee football, and we did like the head up drill, like <laughs> you run up and tackle. And that day, I just I was like, nah, this is not for me. <laughs> okay, let's go forward. Trying, you know, to read your biography. Let's say I saw about Hargrave Military Academy. Mm -hmm. Can you guide me through that? What was the routine there? You know, uh, you were what age there? You went. Uh, when I when I went to Hargrave, I was uh, 17, going on 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And how was it? You know, you were you were not a kid, obviously, right. but you were almost a man. How is it for a for a boy to go to a military academy? So going to a military academy at that age was uh, very challenging because you know, uh, as an 18 year old, 17 year old, you want to be out out and about but you know you're it's like you're caught in like a, a globe you couldn't go anywhere you're at the the school slash base you know what mm -hmm. i mean you're waking up five in the morning to the the trumpet playing and all of that whatever it was i don't know what kind of instrument it was but you wake up to that you gotta have your bed straightened up um, a specific way have your uniform put on a specific way. They come in, you sit in front of your bed. It's like, it's like the military. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sit in front of your bed, they check you out, see if your uh, your gear is correct, see if your bed is correct. Then you gotta go right downstairs, get in formation. You got a group of kids all lined up. And then you stand there and they play the music again. And then you march yeah, to breakfast. Yeah, you march to breakfast and it's just, you know, it's like, it's that, that every morning, five in the morning, probably except for uh, Saturdays and Sundays. Were you, let's say, a good soldier or were you, you know, you're getting uh, fines or, or I don't know if the, it's the correct word. Oh, right, right. So you would get like, uh, so if you get in trouble there, you get like demerits maybe. So mm -hmm. you get like little citations and you had to walk this thing called the bull ring. So if you got a number of, uh, you got a, a certain specific number of these things, I guess you you have to walk this thing called the bull rig, and it's like a big square, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they play the uh, the marching music. So you have to march around this this square, like I guess for like an hour or so. But if you if you did it, it 
It could be two hours or three hours. Come on. Right. Have so you I, been in, in that situation? Yeah, or yeah, yeah. I, I had to walk it like maybe once or twice, but I was always on some like focus, trying to get out of there type deal, mm -hmm. not trying to be in trouble. But, you know, it was one of those uh, experiences I'll never forget for mm -hmm. sure. I've read something else about, I, I already knew the Onyx, the first time you went to Onyx. Right. The story about, they told you that you might never play right. because they caught you. How was the feeling before you find out that, okay, it, it's nothing, it, everything's okay, and they did a bad job, obviously? Uh, right, so, I mean, I mean, I had, I have like this, you know, I guess it's this kind of condition, but it's really nothing serious. So I knew about it in college. Uh, and I knew about it going into the NBA and all of that stuff. And so I tried to come overseas. Once, uh, it was the first time I tried to come overseas, I, Umarea, I, I don't even know the team name really, Umarea is an Italian team. Yeah, I uh, Venezia, to, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, it was with them. And then the following year with Unix, I went there, you know, they examined me. They were like, oh, you know, this isn't good. You know, you, I don't know how you're playing basketball, boom, boom. So I'm like, I'm like, wait, what? You know, they're like, this is like, this is my career. Like, yeah, you might not be able to play it. I'm just like, so is my like career over with, you know? So I guess I took a few more tests and, you know, nothing cleared. So I went home and I was at home for like, Maybe like a month and a half and I was just sitting there like depressing because you know I've been playing ball my whole life and just to find out like something that I wasn't really like aware of that it was this like severe was going to end my career mm -hmm. so I was just there home just chilling and then I got a call from China and it just it changed that way it's great let's move to uh to the present there was a rumor about Real Madrid. You said a quote about staying in Maccabi. Mm -hmm. So what happened then you came to Panathinaikos? Uh, so the Real Madrid thing, I, I wasn't, it wasn't really like anything there. Um, mm -hmm. I think that was just a rumor going on. I haven't really, I haven't spoke to Real. Um, but nothing against them, you know, they're a great club. I was always willing to go to that team. Uh, but here, when I came here, it was, the decision that would came down to was me competing. I want I wanted to be, I want to, this is for uh, a goal for myself. I want to be the best player I can be. And I feel like this team has the characteristics and the players that can allow me to, you know, compete every single, every single day um, in practice. You have a bunch of talented players, um, guys who've been in situations to where they've been in Final Fours multiple times championship games multiple times and I want that feeling myself and like I, I said this before uh, to be known as a great point guard or a great player you have to have those accolades on, on your uh, on your roster you have to have final fours you have to have championship games and right now I don't have any and I want to be one of those guys so this is my goal and this is I feel like that's my destiny right now was it something that crossed your mind when Panathinaikos uh, uh, beat Maccabi in the, in the EuroLeague playoffs and qualified for the Final Four, did you thought, this is the team I want to be? Uh, actually, no. When, when, they, when Pena beat us, I, didn't, I wasn't thinking that at all. I was more upset than anything because um, I felt like this was, that was the moment for me there. Um, you know, when uh, my, my right-hand guy went down weight, uh, it was just, you know, I felt like I had to step up and do more. Mm -hmm. And and I feel like I played well, but I, it wasn't enough to get us to the next level. And it was more upsetting than anything. So coming here wasn't on, on my mind at all. Hey, I read some quotes of you. Uh, you said that leading the te leading a team is the best is uh, something I do best. But you came to a team to a team that has a lot of leaders. Okay, you know, uh, Slukas, Kendrick. How easy is for a player, you know, to be? in a team that had has many leaders and many players that can decide the game. Right, um, so coming here, I don't, I, with a team like this with many leaders, I don't think it would be easy at all. Um, just off the simple fact that we have, we all have the same mindset. And, uh, you know, you don't really know uh, the situation you get into. You don't know guys, guys mentalities or how other people may react to how you approach situations. 
So, I mean, but right now, you know, everything's cool. Everybody's, everybody's here, so which is a good thing. So I'm hoping that it stays that way. And uh, if it does, I feel like we can run it back for mm -hmm. sure. As an all-around player, you can score, you can pass, you can do everything. Do you feel like it's Christmas and you're a kid in a toy store and you could get anything, being on this team? You know, be, having these teammates along you? Uh, most definitely. Being on this team, I feel like it will open up the floor for all of us. Um, just because you don't have, you can't focus on that one guy. I mean, when I was in Maccabi, we had two or three players you had to, you had to focus on. Now you have a whole team that you have to focus on and it's gonna it's gonna be tough for other teams to defend us. Um, just by watching the games the other day, on the, when I was on the bench just watching, I'm just like, wow. You know, I've, had, I had, I've never been on a team to where you have 10, 10 or 11 guys that could go out and give you 20 points. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very interesting to me to be here. And I'm, like I said, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. It's a two scale question. What makes an all around player and what makes a good all around player? as you are a good, a good all-around player, what it takes to be one? What it takes to be an all-around player is hard work. Um, it's never easy to do what we do. Um, I mean, you have, you have players who can come in here and, you know, it comes to them naturally sometimes, but they still have to work hard. They have to get in shape. They have to do drills. They have to do everything else. But you have other guys who will come in here and dive on the floor. Uh, uh, clap, be on the bench, be a good teammate. And that also reconciles with being an all-around player. You have to do everything on the court the right way. And like I said, it, it takes a lot of hard work and dedication. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about last year. How hard was it, uh, given the situation with uh, Israel, Palestine and all of that? How do you, uh, what do you remember the most about that? Because you were at some point in Israel, and at the other uh, day, you went to Belgrade, you know, to, just to play basketball. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, last year was a very difficult situation. Um, just off the fact that, you know, the situation at hand was out of our control. We didn't really know, you know, the, the history about it. Um, still don't really know much about it. Uh, but, you know, I was, I was riding with my teammates. So whatever they were going through, I was going through. Um, so. Uh, just the, the most I think I remember most was the day everything happened. Mm -hmm. uh, it was early morning situation, four or five in the morning. And we just woke up to sirens and, and bombs. So it was very scary. Um, at the moment, my lady was pregnant with my son and we were trying to figure out what was our next move. Um, we didn't really know how we were going to leave because airports were closed down. Um, so pretty much uh, we got a lot of my teammates and I came to my apartment and we tried to figure something out. The team ended up getting us a flight to Cyprus mm -hmm. uh, probably the next day and we were, you know, we were safe. But, you know, very scary situation. Um, travel was difficult. Uh, like I said, my lady was pregnant and I had to, you know, be there for her as well while we were making those moves. and. Like I said, it was a lot, of, a lot to juggle, but we got through it. Was it that a reason you might decided to leave Maccabi? Uh, you know, and you, afraid of uh, something new might happen? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was in a sense, yeah. I mean, that and it came down to me and my guys making that decision. Um, I know mm -hmm. it was just, like I said, we were just a lot of us just you know, trying to figure out the best move for, for us and our family. So, like I said, we we came together as a as a unit, you know, and decided this was what we we're going to do.